Welcome back everyone. It is time for another Red Hot Covered Call video. Wow, it has been a week since my last video and I am absolutely jacked up. So many things are happening. I'll tell you what, man, it gets me excited to get back behind the mic so I can tell you my story. You know, that is the essence of this channel. That's why I love doing the videos because I love telling you my story. We talk about them and maybe you learn something. See, when I started this three years ago, there was not a guy on YouTube like me. There wasn't anybody out there sharing their experiences or their trades and that's when I felt like hey I could really by showing them my trades and maybe they learn something from just watching me do it because three years ago I was like you I didn't know the covered call or cash secure put strategy and I didn't want to make a mistake you know it really seemed simple but when you're sitting there you're sitting there you're apprehensive right you don't want to make a mistake it's something new well that's why I put on the mic over three years ago and I'll tell you what you folks give me the support I need to keep this going and I appreciate it and all you have to do is just bang the like button because it lets me know you like what I'm doing now look what we're doing today is I am going to show you a couple trades and we're going to talk about them. I'm going to show you the charts I'm going to share with you a story as to why I wrote those covered calls and I think it's going to interest you definitely the salty dog covered call writer gets a great video today but look before we get going you know I've promised you a uh, margin discussion you know we're going to talk about that right here right now if you've never been to my channel and I want you to subscribe to the channel it's right there and it's free and hey look if you like this video today bang that like button it lets me know you like what I'm doing now what I'm doing is this you know I really started thinking about all the videos that I've done all the stories I've shared and when I go back to the over 170 videos that I've done on the channel all you have to do is click videos and scroll to the very bottom you'll see that I've talked about everything I've talked about how I had great trades bad trades I talk about a mindset where I feel like when I use the cover call strategy I'm making these little mini paychecks. I talk about the emotions of trading and how I now have a mindset that this strategy is my cash printing machine. See, it really does go back to me having such horrible success trying to day trade or swing trade the market. What I really wanted to do was find a strategy that I could bank on. I could learn a strategy as if I were learning a skill, right? Like a carpenter learns a skill swinging a hammer. That's what I wanted to do with the stock market. And the covered call strategy is that strategy. It is conservative in nature. In fact, the cover call strategy is the only option strategy you're allowed to use in a lot of the retirement 401k account. And there's a reason for that. You're covered. You own the shares for which you're optioning or giving somebody the right to take away. It's not a buy, buy, buy situation. We sell. We sell, sell, sell. We sell the risk to somebody, right? We own the shares and we are going to sell somebody the right, but not the obligation to take our shares from us at a price we pick, usually higher for a time frame that we pick, usually 30 days. And that conservative strategy, for me, has allowed me to have successful trade after successful trade. I'll tell you what, it is a rare trade where I lose money. Whether I make $100 or $1,000, it doesn't matter. When we have a successful trade, it gets us excited, it gets us motivated to make the next successful trade. When was the last time you wanted to make your next trade when you've just lost a couple grand, right? You wanna curl up in a fetal position, you don't wanna look at the stock market. But when you you have that success man you're looking to do it again and now you have a cup half full mentality and now you want to start treating this like a business because now you want to make good decisions you want to have success and quite frankly you want to tell people about it hey I totally understand because that's me and that's why I'm behind this mic sharing with you my successes we talk about them so you get comfortable with the strategy and you will go out and have your success now look I know a lot of you out there would just love to find a strategy that helps you feel comfortable comfortable in life, right? I show you all my numbers and, and quite frankly, they're getting kind of big now, but some of you might think, man, I just can't get there. That's six figures of gain and I only have four figures to work with, right? Well, I get it. A lot of you just want to have that comfortable trade. Maybe you make a hundred dollars, maybe make a hundred and twenty dollars. Well, that's the beauty with this strategy. You can actually find a ton of great stocks that trade right in that nice small account window. You can write that covered call. Maybe you make $80, $90, a hundred dollars. 
dollars. But see, here's the thing. You get the experience that's going to set you up for bigger success. And when you get that experience, man, you won't need me. That's just the truth. But hey, maybe you'll stick around because I jacked you up. Yeah, that's right. I'm excitable because I'm excited that you're learning. You're motivated when you watch my video. Now, look, let's go ahead and get to this. We're going to talk about margin. And I want to talk to you. It's going to be a quick conversation about margin because I think you're going to understand it. It's going to hit you square in the nose as to why most people don't use margin when they write covered calls. Now, look, a real quick primer on what margin is. And hey, look, give me a little runway here. I'm not an expert. But the idea is this. If you qualify for margin, the brokerage house is going to give you a certain amount of credit based on the collateral in your account. So I'm just going to throw out some loose numbers. Say, for example, you have $100,000 in your account and you apply for margin and the brokerage account gives you margin in your account. Now, what this means is this. They're basically giving you credit. You're allowed to trade based on credit. It's like a credit card. They're going to give you added credit to your account. Now, for $100,000, they might give you $50,000 in margin. Now, what does that mean? You have $100,000 in real money. They're going to lend you an extra $50,000. Now, they're not going to charge you for that until you use it. Now, that's the key thing here. See, you could trade all of your money, the real money, the $100,000, and have this $50,000 in credit and never be charged. But the minute you start to use that $50,000 in credit, you're going to be charged interest. This is where a lot of people don't think about. Maybe they know that they're going to be charged interest on the money that they're borrowing. You know, that extra $50,000 to trade, to trade a stock. But if you don't do your research, you're going to be shocked to find out how much they're charging you. Now, with that said, let's talk about why you wouldn't use the cover call strategy with margin. So the very first thing we need to agree upon is really what our goal is with writing covered calls. We're looking to make that 3% per month on the shares that we own, right? If I own 100 shares of a stock and I give somebody the right to take our shares at a higher price, I get paid for that. What I'm hoping to do is make 3% on the total trade. The stock appreciation plus the premium equals 3%. And that's a great trade, right? If we do that every single month, man, we're killing the market. Now let's say we do that on margin. So understand this, margin rates, although they say 5.5% here on Fidelity's website, when I called Fidelity and asked them about this, here's what they told me. Those are introductory numbers. And the real numbers from zero to $25,000 account sizes can be 9.9%. So let's think about that for a second. You actually use the margin, that extra 50,000, and you're getting hit with a 9.9% interest rate on that money. And that's tabulated every day you use that money. Now, you're not being charged 9.9% every day, but the point is, it's like a credit card. You have to pay interest on the money you're using in this margin account. Really, that is it in a nutshell. See, they are charging you 9 and 10% for some small ball accounts. And look, I asked them about higher accounts and they said, you're going to pay the prime rate, which is around 5.9% at the time I made the phone call. So your cover call profits are being eaten up by the interest you're going to pay to borrow that money. I'll leave you on this. Okay. I want you to do your research. I want you to call your broker and ask them about this. See, that's what I did. And that's what I took away from having that discussion. Now, a lot of people will use margin and have margin for when they're trading their account and when they sell a stock and they want to buy another stock within the settle period. Now, what does that mean? I'll just be brief on this. When you buy a stock and then you sell a stock, there is a settle period of three days where that transaction, that selling of the stock has to settle for three days. And for a lot of people, the money, the money is not available for three days. So what happens is that settle period can be a real downer, right? You buy a stock, you make a profit and you see another great opportunity and you sell that stock to, to think that you can then go out and buy this new idea, well, you find out your money's not available. So a lot of people will use margin for those short periods where the money they were going to use is settling for three days. They're on margin. And then when the money gets deposited into their account, it clears the margin side of it. Now, look, for a lot of people, this is absolutely confusing. So I really want you to do your homework if you plan to open up a margin account. You know, margin accounts are used all the time. But when it comes to to writing covered calls and selling cash secure puts on margin. Really what deters us from doing this, we're looking to make 3% on a trade, but the margin interest expenses are so high, doesn't make it profit. Now, speaking of success, I'm going to show you some of my recent trades and what I have on the books. If you remember, I'm still using UDAL. All of those contracts expire April 19th. I also have a Chevron traditional 30 day trade in there that expires April 26th. Just recently, just last week, I wrote, I wrote cover calls on win,
Ryan and Alibaba. And we're gonna talk about those trades right now. I'm gonna show you on the charts as to why I made those trades. You know, I talked earlier about how I talk about the emotions of trading. This can be as emotional as most anything. We get emotional when it comes to money. And when we're losing money in the stock market, it can absolutely rip on our emotion to the point where you could actually get anxiety and depression and all those things. And I'll tell you what, I've told you my story over the years. Coming out of the oil crash a couple years ago, I let that emotionally hammer me. And I made the decision that I was not going to sit on my hands anymore because that's what I did. I sat there and watched all those oil stocks just fall every single day. I convinced myself that they couldn't fall any further to the point where it was a disaster. Coming out of that, right? Out of those ashes of emotions, I changed everything. And that's when I embrace this strategy. And now I keep everything moving. Look, if a stock goes higher, they're take, my shares are taken away. It's a successful trade for me. If a stock falls while I write a covered call, I don't look at it as a failure. Buy that option back and I look to write the next covered call. It's about having a mindset of success. We're always going to be a cup half full. Look, before I move on to these next couple trades, if you haven't figured it out yet, that's really what I'm here for. I'm here to motivate and inspire you to do the strategy, get comfortable with the strategy so you have success. I have no hidden agenda. I never ask you for a nickel. Look, at the end of the day, I love hearing the success stories. It absolutely excites me because I was you. See, three years ago, four years ago, I was you. I didn't have the experience. I didn't have the success. And I'll tell you what, I wasn't comfortable. But then we move forward. We get the experience. And next thing you know, one trade, two trades, three trades, I'm having success. And now to me, it's the most exciting thing in the stock market. So let's talk about those two trades. We're going to go to the charts, right? I'm going to show you the trades, but I'm going to, I'm going to share a story as to why I made these trades just this past week. Now, I'm going to show you Wynn right off the bat because Wynn was one of those stocks that, quite frankly, I had to wait for a couple green days. And we've talked about this for a long time. When it came out that Steve Wynn was messing around and the stock fell from 200 to 100, man, so many people were left holding the bag, including myself. Now, luckily, I have a strike price of about 137 So for me, I wasn't left holding the $200 bag, but still, it absolutely sucks when the stock's trading at 90 and I have a cost basis of 137 Well, well, fast forward and now win is catching a little bit of win beneath its sales pun intended, and it's going higher, right? So my patience has now paid off, at least for this covered call. So why did I pick this covered call? And I'm going to explain this trade right here, right now. So as Wynn is coming out of the December sell-off, and it is rallying with the rest of the stock market, some news comes out here or there about Macau or, or their business or their litigation, this, that, and the other. It sort of stalls right here as everybody else is rallying to all-time highs, right? And I'm saying, God, when will the drama end with when? Well, of course, I'm down some 20 bucks on this trade. So if I write a if I write a covered call at my strike price, I'm not going to get any premiums, right? The premiums are going to be like 50 cents. So I'm not going to write that covered call. I need to wait for a couple green days. If I write covered calls for a strike price that's under my stock purchase price and this thing takes off, yeah, I'm going to lose money. They're going to take my shares lower than what I paid. So I'm in this gray area where I need to make a decision. I'm either going to dance with the devil, write covered calls beneath my stock purchase price and have an exit strategy if the stock goes above it or I'm going to wait. And that's what I've decided to do with Win. As you can see, Win is really treading water here and we really don't know where it's going to go. Recently, all the casinos got some great news and it is now heading higher. In fact, notice Win is trading at 140x. So when it was trading at 135, catching some serious couple green days, I decided I was going to write a $10 out of the money covered call and look, if my shares were taken away at 145 and I get paid about three bucks for that, man, that's a win for me. And that's exactly what I did. So when Wynn was trading at 135, I wrote a 145, getting paid $2.70 per share, which cash on cash for 30 days is 8.9%. Now making 8.9% here in a 30 day cash on cash trade would be great, right? Well, I have owned Wynn since the middle of last year. So this isn't so great, but here's the deal. Years ago, I would have sold Wynn when it fell to 90 bucks, right? I'd have felt like I was kicked in the 
the nads, I would have said hell with this and I would have sold it. Now I have a different mindset. I'm always looking, I'm always looking for that next opportunity to write a great covered call. Now, because Wynn is still a great company, they still pay a great dividend. It's really just a matter of time. At least that's my mindset. I believe Wall Street will always buy up the great company. And the casino stocks have been kicked recently. But look, my mindset is they're eventually going to come back. I just need to be patient. And in this case, you can see my patience has paid off. Now, I'll give you an update as to where this trade goes. But look, if my shares are not taken away at 145, that's a $650 crumb. And if my shares are taken away, we end up pocketing $147.50 for shares that I bought at $137. And I've collected all those juicy dividends. Now, real quick, before I move on to the Baba trade, why would I pick the 145 strike right here? Well, looking at the charts, I'm thinking when could find itself going higher. But you know, it's had this tremendous jump. So I think Wall Street is probably going to take some short-term profit. When you make over $20 a share in just a, in a very short time frame, Wall Street does not care. They take that profit off the board. I'm looking at that resistance line. As you can see, it's probably going to test that 145 number. If it dips off and heads lower, well, I'm going to buy back that $2.70 options for pennies, and then we're going to look to write the next covered call. But if wind does break above that number and head higher, I will have my shares taken away at 145. I'll keep that 270 a share, but we'll have that money. We'll look to do it again with another stock. Okay, I know the video is getting long. I do apologize. Let's talk about my Baba trade. I was going to actually do a video just on this trade alone, but we're going to squeak it in here because, because I just want to tell you the story of this Alibaba trade. Now, Alibaba, just like all the other stocks, had a tremendous sell-off in December and rallied out of that coming into the new year. I think it got as low as 139. Well, my cost basis on Alibaba is 158. I've written so many covered calls on Alibaba. My cost basis is around 158. So for me, if I write a covered call here and have my shares taken away, this is a really profitable trade. But I'm like a lot of you where I actually think Alibaba can rock it higher and I don't want to give away my shares too cheap, right? And uh, unfortunately, this one has gotten me a couple times. Notice how Alibaba here is bouncing and it's not bouncing in $2 and $3 increments. This thing is bouncing in $10 increments. And this is where I've been sitting on my hands and I've just been kicking myself. As Alibaba has been running up to the high 180s, I've been wanting to write that 190 covered call collecting a decent premium. But man, every time I went to execute that trade, I felt like it would go to 200, right? And I'd be kicking myself. So I've always backed off. I really wanted Alibaba to get into the 190s and then write that $200 cover call, maybe picking up four bucks for it. Well, if you, well, if you notice, every time it hit that 187X, man, it starts hitting resistance and it keeps falling down into the 170. Well, after it's done that three times, this past week, I've totally changed my mindset. We are gonna take whatever we get on Alibaba we're going to move on. And that's exactly what I did. When Alibaba was trading at 184X, I wrote a 192.50 strike. I got paid $2.25 for this. We're going to let this trade go wherever it goes. If I have my shares taken away, that's totally fine with me. If I end up keeping Alibaba, look, like I've told you, I have no fear owning one of the largest e-commerce companies in the world. I'll just keep playing for the next covered call. Now, if my shares are taken away, this is a 5.5% trade. Cash on cash 30 days. I'll tell you what, it's just exciting. It's exciting when you put on a trade and if it ends up being a successful trade, man, it really gets you excited to do the next one. Now look, I hope you're having success in the stock market, but more importantly, I hope you like my channel. I hope you like how I bring it to you. I try to bring you some motivation. I give you all the tools you need, all the tools you need to keep the numbers in front of you for free. I don't ever ask you for a nickel and I love hearing your stories. See, I share my story with you in hopes that it makes you feel a little bit comfortable so you'll do it. But you know what I like? I like when you tell me your story of success. I get tons of emails how my videos have changed their lives in ways you would not believe. And that motivates me to get behind this mic every single week. Hey, look, I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, bang that like button and share this video if you know somebody out there that might want to learn this strategy. Because I know, because I know if you're talking to somebody about the stock market and they're interested interested? Well, they're going to like what we're talking about here. Hey, look, until next time, I hope all your covered calls are profitable.